Hello everyone, my name is Ben and welcome back to Pass the Oxcord, a channel where we're back at it with the Rolling Stone Top 500 Albums of All Time list. We're at 499, slowly but surely making some progress, and today we're going to be taking a look at Shaka Khan and Rufus with Ask Rufus. So it was absolutely inevitable that I was sooner or later going to be in over my head completely with an album and way out of my general comfort zone, but I'm not sure that any of us were expecting it to come quite so soon. I'm, I'm drowning here. I'm very far in the deep end. As an 18 year old who only three years prior listened to nothing but pop punk, metal, and various subgenres in those general two genres, I definitely am not very well versed in a R&B and funk fusion from the 70s with two artists collaborating that I'm only mildly sure I've even heard of before. Even if I have checked out a few somewhat similar projects kind of from this era, uh, Funkadelic's Maggot Brain does come to mind, even if that is a little bit more on the experimental end of things. I was wondering if this was particularly influential or culturally significant in any kind of way, and I guess the answer to that based on my research is yes and no, but mostly just seems to be an R&B album that people seem to really enjoy and has remained somewhat of a classic. Also, when looking a little bit behind the scenes a little bit deeper into this album, I found out that there was actually some like arguments, some fighting going on between members of the band, and you really can't tell with how harmoniously this album came together. This album is far from messy, with 37 minutes and 9 songs that all feel pretty cohesive with each other in its entirety. While there is definitely some significant highlights, every song on here does feel like it fits in its own right and it's pretty solid. Across the record, the instrumentals definitely feel like the time period in which they come from and that's not an insult at all because this blend of R&B definitely is a fun one to listen to, a very enjoyable one overall, and it does seem like it's kind of avoiding the more fun upbeat side of R&B from that time period that I feel like I've heard before, and instead this is drawing much more on the smooth, soulful end of things. The melodic keys and catchy bass lines that groove throughout the entire song always keep me interested. While most of the songs on this album don't follow any kind of verse-chorus-verse-chorus structure, as would be traditional, the instrumentals really hold all of the songs together like glue and the repeated sections of the instrumentals. There's a lot of the more harmonious instrumental sections that really make you feel the emotion that the album is trying to give off, and that's definitely a positive as well. And even though it's usually a pretty straightforward and relaxed energy, I definitely give credit to the somewhat interlude-like track, Slow Screw Against the Wall, and especially the fitting and very dramatic closer, Egyptian Song. So it's not at all hard to come to the conclusion that the instrumentals on this album are very nice if my rambling is put aside. And the singing on this album unsurprisingly matches the previously stated energy of the instrumentals. Almost all of the singing on this record is handled by Chaka Khan, and she's a very big part of this record. Despite the titling saying Rufus featuring Chaka Khan, it's more like Chaka Khan featuring Rufus the way that most of these tracks feel, mostly just due to her larger-than-life performances all across it. With lyrically speaking, most of these being love songs in their most boiled down form, I guess. Her emotive vocals really do fit with the lyrics they go aside with, but the fact that the majority of the songs on here do end up being love songs is kind of leading into my only issue with the album, that being diversity. You do have a few moments on the album that end up feeling like back to back the same stuff, and with how different some of the ones with different topical focus feel, those being Earth Song, Hollywood, and Egyptian Song, I feel like if there was more topical diversity in the lyrics, we probably would have gotten more sonic diversity, which is also kind of needed on the album. A little bit of variety definitely would have helped this album, even though it is a pretty concise 37 minutes. It doesn't drag its feet very much, but it would have been great to see some variation in some of the slower tracks. Coming to favorites and least favorites is definitely pretty easy 
see when looking at the track list of this album as some definitely stood up very high compared to the rest, most of which I've given brief mention to already, Earth Song being the first one, which is just a song about the beauty of the Earth around us and how magnificently it was created seemingly. I really like how nicely this song was put together and how clear it is with its message, and I feel like Shaka on here is singing more about just a generic god that can kind of be applied in many different cultures, many different ideologies, which is really cool because it just seems to be a non-personified version of the very idea, and I enjoy that. Another one that I've already given mention to is Hollywood, which comes later on the album, and it's very catchy and upbeat in comparison. It seems to be an almost satirical take on life in the big city, which is an idea that was definitely used a lot of times since this came out. This song is just really fun. Fun to listen to as well and that's definitely the biggest appeal of it to me finally this closer is so damn good and again i've mentioned it already egyptian song on here is such a fitting closer because of how dynamic and loudly soulful i guess you could say it is in comparison to the rest of the very calm energy the rest of the album gives off for the most part this one's far less stripped back and just displays a lot of raw emotion. It just feels very climactic and that's always a great thing for a closer to do. As far as least favorites go, it's more just the tracks that don't make me care about them quite as much. There is only nine songs on the album, so there's not really a lot of room for middle ground if I pick too many least favorites, and I don't think it's really deserving of the treatment of getting a lot of least favorites either. I guess Close the Door doesn't feel like a particularly exciting one to me. This wasn't necessarily a a great indication of what the album would be when I was pretty early on in it. And the same can be said about Magic in Your Eyes, which was, for me at least, the song that pushed it over the edge of having too many love songs. That one's probably the least memorable of the bunch, so I just didn't care for it very much. Really though, I am far from hating any of the nine songs on here, and I think even those last two that I mentioned are pretty solid in their own right. On a less stellar album, those could have been the best tracks on it, or one similar in quality level if that makes any sense. So overall, does it deserve its spot in the list? I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, but part of that has to do with the fact that I don't know what other albums from this era, sound, or style, if any, that will be higher up on the list. This very well, in comparison, could either be better or worse than a lot of that stuff, so it's really hard for me to say exactly how that will sit in the long term. For now, I'm definitely gonna say that this seems like it should have a place in the list, but I've also heard from various sources that there is better collaborative albums from Shaka Khan and Rufus, so maybe not. Like I said, for the record, we're gonna say yes. And I did enjoy this quite a lot, so I'm feeling about an 8 out of 10 on here. Definitely a solid record that I will be revisiting, and I'm gonna check out some of the other work from the collaboration. That's all I got for today, so drop a like on the video if you did like what you saw today, and subscribe to the channel for more music-related content coming your way. Hit the bell for notifications on that same thing as well but that is just about gonna wrap it up for this one and i will see you in the next video